What is up, everybody? Let's get into the DES Racing Unicon 01 Display Overview Introduction. All of it. It's out of the box, not stock, but it is basically another Yokomo YD2 conversion chassis from Vietnam, though. This guy, Tran decided he was going to make a deck that basically allowed you to adjust the wheelbase of the YDT and then from there it just it just took off so this is not the standard deck this is one of those uh, low flex decks and then it's got an upper deck but the stock deck is different and you can make it flex and stuff but these are the decks He's got all these kind of decks. DES Racing is definitely one of the unique brands out right now. And that's why I love this build. First impressions of this chassis is awesome looking. Never seen anything look so good. Yet be so simple. That's why I chose this one over the other version. Called the Volcano deck. Uh, didn't want to get that one. This one comes with some stuff. But I had to drill that third hole right there so I could get to my servo mount, servo horn there. Uh, other than that, no complaints about this. As you can see, all the adjustability is over there. So many different things. The whole wheelbase can change right here. Your wheelbase can change and you can move the transmission out of there without moving those suspension arms, just like anything else. You see how you can slide everything even more forward. You can move your whole front flex plate or, or the flex plate that's in the brace for the flex plate. Excuse me. That whole brace can move forward as well. I have the non-adjustable one on there, but there is an adjustable flex plate. So that's the bottom deck. It definitely looks cool. Definitely nice. Definitely strong. Zero complaints. You can run all your diffusers back there. And same thing for the front. YD2 compatible bumpers. Now, let's get into what comes with this chassis when you buy it. Because again, it's a conversion chassis. So you're supposed to have a YD2 already. And then you just buy this and then convert everything over. All right, the chassis comes with a front bulkhead front suspension mounts, front arms, lower and upper, top plate, servo mount, comes with uh, knuckles. These aren't the knuckles that it comes with. It comes with standard knuckles. The bearings are hard to push into and take out of. And that's why you don't see them on there. I didn't want to deal with that, so I didn't do those. So it comes out of the box with those things. It also comes with this rear bulkhead, pretty much. It's not stock. I did, it's, it, 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 I did my own thing, but it comes with a rear bulkhead, a rear shock tower, transmission, uh, basically the, the brace for it, everything, like, you know, the, the casing, I should say. Comes with the adjustable, this adjustable piece here for both sides. So you can run RR, or you can run low or high mount, uh, whichever way you decide. I decided to do it right there. And it also comes with rear suspension mounts, rear arms, adjustable rear arms, as you can see down there. And rear knuckles, which are not there for the same reason as the front. Hard to put the bearings in and just decided not to do it. You also get the turnbuckles. They are red with rod ends that are red. And then it has a silver, silver actual metal turnbuckle piece. So you get all the little rod ends to go for the rear camber, the front right there, top, bottom, all of that and even the steering, but again, this is far from stock even then, so uh, don't have those displayed for you right now. 
it comes with these pieces right here for the actual uh, what do I call those you can run those here these pieces originally go here so you can put the dampers on the back or front whichever way you decide outside of that you don't get anything else you don't get gears that go in there because you're supposed to get them from the YD2 you don't get axles you don't get uh, the front steering turnbuckles at all <clears throat> you also don't get uh, there was something else that I was a little oh yeah the dampers you don't get dampers neither uh, neither do you get uh, I guess the best suited uh, suspension setup you could say it comes with a really long plastic spacer so that you can run it sort of like how I have it run right now but um, yeah just not what I was going for so I'll, I'll probably put a video of a stock one and how it actually is supposed to look so you can see versus mine you can get it in plenty of different colors red black green black green, whatever there's billions of colors you just look at you can do is you can go to DS Racing's page on Facebook or you can go to Rockbait Racing's page on Facebook and check them out to get the info on all the little details like they got stuff for RDX, the RMX, MST, RevD, they got stuff for everything that's out there pretty much and this is their first DS Racing, their first conversion chassis ever so now they have the Res 2, R-E-S 2 which is a full chassis minus the dampers. Uh, so, yeah, let's get back into this car. Before I dive deep into the details that make this my special, special vehicle, um, we'll go ahead and talk about the servo, the electronics, and everything going on there. So, obviously, it's all tucked as good as it's going to get right now. It's going to clean up. This is the only car that I plan to actually shorten and make the wires uh, actually only fit one way because I'm trying to clean this up as good as I can. But I have the Samwa Super Vortex Gen 2 Pro ESC with no fan. And then I also have the uh, OMG V2 10.5T motor there. I run this ProTec uh, 4800 milliamp hour battery with Velcro mount. I did not, oh yeah, the chassis comes with battery mounts too, but I didn't put them there because I wanted this clean look. Kind of feel like battery mounts are overrated at this point. And the reason being is because I sold my overdose uh, battery mount on the GOM for a good price. So kind of just was like, wow. And then I made it work without battery mounts. So. Back to the back to the electronics. No more ranting. I have the Amazon special receiver. This is an FH4T. You can run that on there instead of buying the Samwa one, which costs to me a lot more. We got the Yokomo Gyro, Yokomo Servo, tried and true formula there. And that should cover all of the electronics. We have the spare parts bin, which has been thrown at this like in the most insane amount of ways. We have the, ah boy, we have spacers. We have more spacers or standoffs. These are called standoffs, M3 standoffs from Amazon. We got <laughs> more standoffs back here. We have, we have the wonderful rod ends that I are, are also from Amazon. We got more spacers. We got more standoffs back here. We got more spacers. We, we got a custom spare, spare parts bin, but you know, to the point. Body mounts, same thing up here. These are black standoffs with spacers. It's all different, all unconventional, and uh, I love it. So let's get into it the dampers are the od hg v3 i believe dampers or v2 with a dress up kit either way i like od dampers because of the way that you can adjust this damper length with this top shop 
shock cap you can unscrew it and it doesn't you know mess with the actual dampening of the shocks because there's another uh, screw there so got these MST super soft or MST soft springs with uh, stock X rings in there and then 20 weight oil from Traxxas silicone I went back to silicone oils easily accessible so that's the front very nice can't tell you which one these are but they're soft in the rear same thing as you can see but these are I'm pretty sure these are MST stock blue green not sure uh, springs there and then we got Yokomo like these are I don't even know the length on that the length is pretty long there uh, rod ends same here rod ends are a little longer 20 weight is also in the rear of these so just a spring change for the weight in the rear and we're good to go I really focused on trying to make sure I could push down the middle and both the front and the back move because I wanted this weight shift effect that's what everybody's doing so focused on doing that 20 weight in the front 20 weight in the rear dead damps dead dampening uh, so close the shock all the way and then screw the cap on then this is what you have this affects that greatly two standoffs here gets the damper away but it makes this require a stiffer spring so the closer it is to the arm the less stiff the spring has to be I learned that um, so it's pretty far away as you can see there's the arm itself and then the damper is way up here I learned that from the Rhino Racing Shark uh, because you had to face the far out okay what's next we have oh let's let's go back to the front and let's talk knuckles rev d knuckles don't know the asl whatever don't don't know the name of them but i got these because they were in the spare parts bin and they work nothing crazy about them they allow me to get a nice suspension going here you can choose whether you go for this more forward one here or there's another screw you can put on one that's closer decided to go more inward this chassis standard comes as an IFS front so a cantilever in the front I flipped this whole knuckle around knuckle this piece right here this needs to be turned 180 degrees so I flipped that around and did this this was spaced differently in the manual so I created my own caster and not the standard caster that comes with it we have dress up washers all around suspension down low is pretty straight uh, we're not going to go into the whole whether I got toe out toe in caster and all those things so just so you know this part of the front end is not stock at all and big elephant in the room why did I go for this huge standoff to make basically the worst almost perpendicular <laughs> front upper versus front lower wanted to try something different that's it and it's pretty cool to see how it works nothing more to it no science no research no R&D just wanted something different and it's pretty cool that front end is awesome now for the rear, the rear knuckles. The rear knuckles are the overdose type two rear knuckles that you can adjust the toe because I wanted to keep these stock, the suspension mount. So just the only ones I know of that you can adjust toe that are not active toe without having to do all these loosening on the bolts and everything. So there's the reason behind that. I have overdose axles connected to the like Yokomo front part of the axle so there's that uh, and then the same thing in the rear just wanted something different and there it is different standoffs really high arm tilts downward matches the front 
front rear. Now, if you don't know already, there are three types of steering that you can put on these drift cars. You have a slide rack, you have a wiper system, and then there's direct drive steering. Direct drive steering has probably been popular for a long time, but Rhino Racing made it very popular on the Shark with their direct drive steering system conversion that you can put on the front and change the whole front bulkhead. Uh, you can slide the servo forward or backward to adjust toe and adjust bump steer, all this other stuff. What I did was I took the Rhino Max system and put it on this vehicle. So Yokomo already has a servo upside down. All I did was make a longer servo horn. And when I say make, I mean buy from Amazon. And I put it on the steering plate that comes with the Rhino Max. The Rhino Max V2 steering plate that you get, you get six of them in a package. Uh, so because of the Rhino Max V2, I now have direct steering. The slide rack is a hundred dollars and, and it could be two hundred dollars the whole system this was free because i already had it i really think direct drive steering is the way to go if you have the tuner for your servo you save a lot of money doing this and you save a lot of weight and you get more precise uh, ackerman that you would like you can see here mine is suited for how i like to do things minimal toe out as well so the direct drive is not a yokomo conversion it is straight up what i made on my own and i love it i understand it it's very simple nothing to it i got rid of my bump steer as well not going to go into all those details but there we have it and that's mostly it for this chassis. Now again, I said I did a lot of things different, so it's not your normal Unicon 01. But here it is. All the spacers and everything that makes it so unique. I put spacers here. Normally this would be rotated the other way. So this piece is rotated around 180 degrees. And so we have this here, which would not give me enough clearance to have the motor and ESC on top of each other. Another inspiration from the Rhino Racing Shark that I traded a long time ago, long time ago, <laughs> traded a time ago, not that long. And what it allowed me to do when I traded it, I was learned a lot from that chassis learn where to put some weight so you can get some performance out of it out of a drift car so that's where I decided to put the ESC batteries pretty far back and again I said it's velcro it's velcroed on and it makes a very simple look outside of that you're never gonna find a chassis that looks like this it's kind of how I do things. I would have opted for IFS, but I didn't like where it was placed and it didn't perform well in my opinion. Now, the Unicon also has a updated conversion kit that gets rid of the IFS or the cantilever suspension, uh, but I did not buy that one. I bought this one and I made my own front and rear suspension setup. The adjustable arms in the rear are all the way out, which is why I had to get these axles in the first place. As you can see when it's fully drooped, I'm barely in there. Barely in there, but when you, you know, it drops down. Get a little bit more room. Drives fine to me. And any diff fits in here, by the way. Inside of this transmission case, all the diffs, the common ones, fit in there. 
but it's not a quick change diff, so you won't, you don't get that luxury on this chassis, but nonetheless, still, still an awesome platform for making it your own, I should say. Custom magnet mounts. If I missed anything, you guys let me know in the comments, uh, and I'll go from there. Tetsujin wheels, usually my go-to choice, and these are MST gold dots on them right now. Here's just a little bonus video. Uh, I already turned my mic off, but I wanted to share with you one of the things that I am now enjoying more than I thought I would. And as you can see, my remote is on. And there's a little blue light right there that signifies that the ESC is on as well. As you hear, it's completely quiet. Testing wise, I've not driven this on a very hot day outside or anything, but I have driven it long periods of time by myself and it doesn't it doesn't get crazy up in the temperatures crazy high up in the temperatures the motor itself the OMG V2 has a fan inside of it so the motor cools itself and the ESC doesn't work too hard with these slippery tires so I'm not worried about temperature such a cool cool way to signify performance to me because I feel like all the fans they serve their purpose they definitely sound cool they also vibrate and I'm not saying vibration plays that big a deal because the foam tape dampening that on the areas that need to be dampened but if you never have vibration in the first place you won't need to take it out. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Keep God first. I will catch you on the next one.